Hello, and thank you all for coming. Welcome to the first capstone reception for the fall 2020 semester. We have uh, two capstone shows that are happening uh, back to back. So this is the first one, and then we'll have another one next week. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how tonight is going to go, and then we'll get started with the program. First of all, I'm going to make a couple of announcements. And then you're going to hear from Frederick Bartolovic. He is the director of the School of Art and Design. And then you're going to hear from Sandra Reed. She is the faculty member who has been working with the capstone class this semester. And then we have a a uh, brief pre-recorded video for you. It's about 12 minutes long and in it you're going to get a chance to see some of the artwork that's in the exhibition and you're also going to get to hear from the four terrific young artists that are in this show. And then after that they actually are all available tonight to answer questions. So uh, once the video gets done, we'll start our question and answer session and then you will get a chance to type in your questions and, and um, find out anything that you want to know. So um, first of all, the announcements um, there, uh, the ex exhibition is actually open right now. It's on view in the Carroll Gallery through Thursday, November uh, 5th. And the hours are from 10 to 4, but if you're not a student or, uh, or a faculty member and you want to see the show, the building is closed right now, but if you just call the School of Art and Design, we can help you get set up with an appointment to come in and see the show. And if you're in the area, I strongly recommend it. It's really terrific. It's beautiful to see in the pictures, um, but if you can see it in person, it's a really special show. And then, uh, as I was saying, next week we have the uh, second and final Capstone show, and that is the spaces in between, and that will open uh, in the Carroll Gallery on Monday, November 9th. So that means a week from now, at the same time, we're going to have another virtual reception. So I hope you will be able to join us, and I'm so glad you're here tonight. And with that, I'm going to uh, give it over to Frederick. Thanks, Jamie. Can you hear me? I can hear you. One moment, I'm sending you. There you go. Good, good. All right. Well, um, everybody who's here, welcome. Um, welcome to the virtual reception for the show. And like Jamie said, please, um, if you are able to come down to the gallery and check it out, um, please do so. I went down this afternoon and spent um, a, a good chunk of time down there. Um, so as Jamie said, uh, my name is Frederick Bartolovich. I'm the interim director of the School of Art and Design. Uh, I wanted to just share a little bit of historical perspective, I think, on this show, on the students um, who are showing and what they've gone through to sort of get here. Um, when things uh, back in March changed our lives um, forever, um, everything was shut down. Uh, we really didn't know what was going on or how things were going to progress at the university. And uh, I worked with several different teams over the course of the summer in planning and transitioning um, to the role of director and also strategizing about what fall semester in the School of Art and Design would actually look like. Um, we're in a really unique predicament in the world of art where what we do requires us to have face-to-face -face classes and um, the ability for us to be in a virtual world isn't nearly as easy as it is for some disciplines. Um, it requires interaction for us to look at the scale of an object or a piece of artwork, um, the hue or the shade of a color in a painting without the distortion or interruption of transmission through an internet connection. Um, and uh, so after many new safety protocols were implemented um, in the school this fall, um, we really did not know how the capstone shows were ultimately going to go. And it was a big question, uh, Mark. Um, Sandra was leading that charge and um, everyone uh, in the entire school pulled together to help make uh, this show happen. Um, we tried to make another capstone show happen earlier this year that uh, got canceled last um, in the springtime. Um, so it takes a community to come together, including the student artists, including um, our gallery director, Jamie Platt, 
um, Sandra, who uh, has done an ex amazing job leading the class. And every student in this show also had a faculty mentor that they worked with throughout the entirety of the semester to develop the work that's on uh, uh, exhibition in the Carroll Gallery. And so I want to acknowledge the dedication of both the faculty in the School of Art and Design and the students um, in the Capstone show. Um, one of the skills that I really believe is incredibly important for being an excellent artist is adapt adaptability. Um, how nimble are you on your feet? Um, how fast can you think on your feet? And change pay, you know, change your practice as an artist and change how you make work. And that's the one thing I'll say about all the students that are in the capstone semester um, right now, that all these students did just that. They figured out how to, in the face of adversity, persevere. They adapted their practice uh, to all the requirements of social distancing, to mask wearing, to class structures that ultimately defied their original expectations. So I just want to put out a congratulations to Savannah, Paige, uh, Kirsty, and Eric. Um, you should be particularly proud of the artistic achievement that you've completed this semester. And I believe if you can finish your art education in this climate, that anything is possible. So I hope you believe that too. Um, so thank you very much. Okay. Okay, and now we will um, hear from Sandra Reed. Hello, everybody. Good evening on this Monday night at the beginning of, of November. Um, the exhibition that you're going to be hearing from the artists about is called Nostalgia Inc. And I want to emphasize that the students chose that title. So the students are put into groups. Um, we have two groups of four capstone um, exhibitions this, um, or two groups of four students forming two exhibitions this fall. And we put the students together based on the diversity of their work. So the class really worked together at the very first class period to kind of look at their majors, look at what they thought was possible for themselves. And, um, you know, students volunteered to be in this first group to go just a little bit earlier than the second group. And um, so this group tonight has one graphic design student, one sculpture student, a printmaking student, and a student in our BA arts program. And the students come from, um, three of them are from West Virginia, from Barbersville, Winfield, and Dunbar, and one from Washington, DC. Um, their work will thrill you. And it's just so important, if you possibly can, to come and see the work for yourself. Three of these students have um, rewards for you if you do come to the Carroll Gallery to see the work. They have um, takeaways. Um, for instance, Paige has ceramic um, components. Maybe she'll tell you about in your question and answer period um, that you can pick up and take with you. And the same for Savannah. She has something that you can take with you as kind of a reward for seeing the show in person. Um, their work is tremendously diverse and we prize that so much here at the School of Art and Design that the students all study um, they learn how to weld, they learn how to manipulate digital photos, they learn how to draw, so they're learning a whole set of skills. And even though they might have an emphasis, such as printmaking, um, their capstone shows so many times, and you'll see it in the show, they hearken back to the things that they learned in their foundations courses. Um, Paige Bowen, for instance, is a printmaking major, and yet she has ceramic works and a video component in her exhibition, in addition to um, really ambitious prints as well. So um, I'm just, it's been a pleasure to work with these students and to work with Jamie, um, a gallery director for this, and um, also with the mentors, the four mentors for the students tonight. Um, actually, there's three because Hannah Koslowski is working with two of the students. She's working with both Savannah Jolia and Kirsty Lallum. And then Alora McColl is working with Paige Bowen and um, Miyuki Cook with Eric Williams. And so maybe that's a really nice transition or segue to the students themselves. Thanks, Jamie, for helping with this event tonight. Can't hear you, Jamie. Thank you. Thank yes. you so much, Frederick and Sandra. And yes, as you said, Sandra, it is time to watch 
the students give their talks. So without further ado, Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kate Bowen and I'm a senior coordinator here at Marshall. Uh, my capstone is focusing on three main traumas throughout my childhood, which is uh, my house fire, my mom's brain aneurysm, and my parents' divorce. Um, I've made a series of prints that explore in a unique way how each of the traumas kind of are seen in my memories and how they've affected my life um, and then incorporated different things like the wallpaper as far as um, explaining those obsessions that I gained through that. Uh, along with that, I've incorporated aspects um, from my childhood that I used to cope and still so use to cope as an adult, which can be things like really fun, <laughs> which is very evident in most of my work. Uh, so I'm really glad I had the opportunity to help kind of explain to a lot of people in my life why I use things like Billy Bob, things like Disney so often in my work. Um, I've also incorporated a installation that is going to uh, showcase films of a lot of these obsessions and events in my life. Uh, and I've also got a couple previews with that, so please come to the show if you want to get one of those. Uh, it, it's, it would mean a lot to all of us here if you were able to come. Um, as far as thank yous go, I'd really like to thank um, my classroom mentor, Laura. She really helped me work through a lot of these ideas. Uh, I'd like to thank Sandy Reed, our professor, of course. I'd like to thank Jamie for helping me install everything. I, I really was stressing out about it, and she helped me a lot. Uh, and then I'd like to thank my family for helping me be able to pursue a career in art. It's something that I didn't think that they would be on board with, but we're getting there. Uh, so thank you, everyone, and please come to the show. My name is Savannah Julian. I'm a graphic design major here at the School of Art and Design. And my capstone project combines painting and design. Painting's been a passion of mine ever since I started here. Though, personally, I've never really grasped or understood the concept of abstract painting until fairly recently. And I always wanted to try to challenge myself. So I thought, what better way to challenge myself than to try to combine both painting and design while also doing abstract art. So I wanted to also kind of uh, involve the viewer in a way. So I took these paintings. I added a very textured background using unconventional materials such as moths, squirt guns, nerf guns, um, saran wrap, and I created these. And then I added these lines on top to put some some space and depth. And to do that, I used value, of course. So black lines, and then I used gray lines, and then white. And what that creates is like a really interesting play on what happens when the viewer looks at something and they see something that's not there. So I would go and I'd ask, what do you see when you look at this? Some people would look at Little details such as the texture. Some people look at the whole picture. So I get a variety of answers such as waterfalls or leaves, and then I get people saying it reminds me of a cityscape. So when I gathered all this response, um, I then went out and I took images of each of the responses and added them in digitally. In the end, through the prints, such as Example. People want to tell me it reminds me of clouds, so and then other people go and they look at it and they're like, 
why they do that. And the best part about this is that it allows people to agree on something as well. Given everything, all the tension happening in the name, it's nice to see people come together and agree on something. And that is my capstone. I'd like to thank um, my mentor, Hannah Kozlowski, uh, Sandra Reed, Frederick, for helping me work on this project over the summer. Um, I'd like to thank my parents and uh, my boss at DRIP, Bobby Van Havre. It's been a really big support and helping a lot with gathering inspiration. I'd also like to ask you, the viewers of this Capstone show, to um, kind of get involved with this project as well. And I thought, what better way to kind of conclude this project than to continue it a little bit more after? So I'd like to ask you, the viewer, what do you see whenever you look at this piece? You look at the background, the texture, the whole piece. And for my capstone, I've decided to focus on the CCD phenomenon that went along with these. Um, the CCD phenomenon is also known as the Pelvic Collapse Disorder, where beings just randomly decide to like, disappear from their hive about 11 years ago. And I decided to show that in my furniture, my sculpture, and my painting pieces as well. With my furniture pieces, I decided to mimic hives that don't have bees in them, and so it's kind of representing an apiary, apiary I believe, um, of how the bees would be there. So that's where I come along with this piece as well, where bees are totally absent, but looks like the home of a honeybee. Along with those pieces, I have the paintings behind me, and and one of them, the bees are present in the total vegetation is beautiful, vast, and green. And with the vegetation in the brown piece, it's withered and gone away, where the bees are also absent. I also want the viewer to be able to walk in in a rack with my pieces, such as sit down at this bench and look at the nature found objects in my painting as well to be able to read some educational facts in some pamphlets and some books. So they are welcome to touch anything they would like. With the uh, light picture that shows that there is hope with the colony collapse disorder, as well as this piece that comes with some quotes that kind of bring in that feeling that they are kind of disappearing and how it would feel if they do. And for my inspiration, I would like to give thank you to my grandmother, my mother, all of my family, including my brother and everyone else. And thank you to all my loved ones and Hannah for being my mentor and cheering me on. studying in the School of Art and Design. Um, for this capstone, I wanted to focus this project on an uh, aspect of my life. And, um, growing up, I've started taking photography, I think, as far back as middle school, I believe. Um, usually, just to take pictures, record my travels throughout the, throughout the years to places like Universal Orlando, to Jacksonville to my grandparents' place in South Carolina. And over time, it became, it trans it became, um, the landscape photography 
Thank you so much, everybody. And now it's time for the Q&A. So if you have questions, go ahead and type them in now. I'm going to start off with a question for Eric. And let's see. OK, so Eric, I'm I noticed that um, you use your photographs have a lot of red in them and I'm wondering if you're if you're conscious of that and if if color plays a role in what you select to photograph yes I am aware that my my photographs have a lot of red in them um, I it didn't come to mind whether color played a huge role with the photographs that I took. OK, then I'll ask a follow up question. How do you how do you decide what to take a picture of? Like what what happens when you want to take a picture of something? Usually. If it if it catches my eye, so let's say for example, the scenery or world if something if there's something that catches my eye then i would take a picture of it um what was the second question again oh that was basically it you did a good job thank you very much okay and now i have a question for Paige. OK, Paige, this is from Sarah. The question is, what was your process for your small prints? So the small prints, each of them is a little bit different as far as process goes. Um, for example, the um, house fire one is uh, called the split fountain, which is where um, you have multiple colors of ink on one layer. So it just kind of mixes it. Each one's kind of its own individual print because you just can't get the colors to interact the same way each time because every time you're pushing the ink through the screen, it's mixing and melding into a little bit more of an ombre. Um, the empty room print is a halftone, which is this really interesting like photorealistic method where uh, it turns a picture into just all these tiny little dots that when you're up close on it, it doesn't look like anything, but the farther away you get, you can like make out what looks exactly like a photo, like it's so realistic. Um, and then the hospital room print was just a uh, simple one layer 
uh, design that I printed twice with just like adjusting the screen a little bit to give it that 3D effect. So with the one, that process that has the little dots, um, how do you know, how do you plan for what that's going to look like? Well, so um, I was very lucky to have um, Sarah McDermott's uh, screen print class twice so far in, this, uh, in, in my college career. Um, and I had the handout from when we did this assignment previously. And it has like, she has it down to a science of like, this is the resolution you need it at. This is the like diagonality of the dots that you need it at. So it's, um, you can mess around with it a little bit, but there's, there's a pretty, um, precise like formula for like this is how small the dots can be because obviously the smaller the dots are the more realistic the image is going to be um but if the dots are too small then they're not going to show up on the screen and you won't be able to get ink through them so there's a pretty precise field of like this is how small they can be while still showing up and sarah just happened to already have that information for me luckily <laughs> thank you Paige. And I have a question for Savannah. So Savannah, what is the most common thing people see in the art so far? And why do you think that is? So the majority of people that I've seen have um, been seeing cityscapes. I feel like a small few people that will like look at um, the little textures, but the majority of people tend to look at the whole thing and they'll see, they'll think it runs a, a window per se, and they'll be looking out into a cityscape. And I think that's just because of the lines and bars, it reminds them of construction almost, like a construction site with like the beams being, you know, moved and they're looking up at it, or they're looking down through it. At, at the bottom is the concrete where the texture would be. And that's one of the most common responses. I was, I've also gotten like a variety in one piece before where I've gotten railroads or um, power lines. And then there'll be people that say it reminds me of clouds. That one's a really popular one as well. Um, yeah, that's the majority of the people that look at them usually see those things. And I'll get the select few that are very specific in what they see. So. It's interesting. It's it's kind of like a like one of those ink plot tests, right? Definitely. Um, so I have another question for you, Savannah. It is: um, Does the pressure of a deadline inhibit your creativity or enhance it? I'd say a little bit of both, really. Um, it's kind of nice having a little bit of pressure because it gets me working and it kind of you know, motivates you a little bit more. And it's also kind of nice, like I could go to somewhere, I can just show anyone, I can send them a picture of it, text or email, and they can get their response back to me and they usually do it fairly quickly. And, um, or I'll take it in person somewhere and people just randomly come up and you know, talk about it with me. And so I don't usually have an issue get it, gathering responses. People are fairly quick about, you know, telling me what they think. That's one of the things I enjoy about people. You don't have to ask, they'll just tell you. But um, usually the process is fairly quick though, especially the painting process. It's kind of second nature at this point. <laughs> oh, great. And now I have another question that's from Hannah Koslowski. It's for, for everyone, but I'm gonna start with you since you're already here. Hannah says uh, to, to the whole group, well done everyone. And what's next for each of you? What do you plan to create once the semester is over? You can, I think my internet may have like cut out for something. Oh, am I good? We're good? Oh, yeah, okay. good. Um, so my plan after the semester is to continue on honestly with this process, this project, because I really enjoy it. Um, okay. Am I still good? Okay. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. Um, All right. So after 
college or a BFA program. I do plan on getting a master's and maybe in painting, continuing on. Um, in terms of like project wise, I plan on continuing graphic design a little bit, enhancing my portfolio while also building up a portfolio in painting as well. Um, that's the plan right now for after this. That's exciting. All right. I'm going to now Paige, you're going to get a chance to answer the same question. What are you what do you what's next for you? What do you plan to create once the semester is over? Um, I honestly don't know. It's one of those things where that I'm actually having trouble with right now is the fact that I'm not going to have access to all of these amazing equipment and studios. Um, so for example, like ceramic stuff, which I've been really getting into for the past year, probably I'm not really going to have the opportunity to make because I, I don't have a kiln. I don't have a throwing wheel. Um, but screen print is something that is fairly easy to do at home. So I'm probably going to try to get back to my roots a little bit and do a little bit more screen printing. Um, it's been a while since I've made a shirt design, so I'm probably going to try to make another um, run of those and uh, just try to get some stuff set up for um, like an online shop or something. So that's my biggest plan after graduation. That sounds great. Now you'll probably find a way back to ceramics, I bet. <laughs> I, I hope so. I hope so. Thank you. And Eric. OK, Eric, the question is, what's next? After college, I do want to. I do want to keep going with photography. I'm hoping to maybe find a job as a contract photographer or a freelance photographer. Um, and hopefully move out of out of Fairfax County where I live, if not if not Virginia. But there are a lot of focuses in art. There are a few focuses in art that I have enjoyed throughout my time in the art program that I also want to to continue with um, graphic design and drawing the just to name a few. OK, great. Thank you. And Kirsty, you're next. Ooh. OK, hi. Hi. Uh, uh, after I graduate, I'm hoping to create more furniture because I'm actually really fond in creating that and creating benches, tables, and I want to learn how to create some bookshelves and stuff that can be placed everywhere. Um, so I plan on doing that along with my father, hopefully to create our own business. But I also want to go into welding school and get my welding certificate to have kind of a backup. And with this as well, I want to start selling some paintings, maybe multiples of what I already painted in different sizes but as well as other types of paintings, and I want to start a business somehow. Awesome. Um, thank you. And let's see, Savannah, I have another question for you. And the question is, what made you use so many different mediums? In terms of like uh, texture or the types of paint that I've used? So if it's in terms of texture, I just wanted to explore a little bit and see what could be possible with like painting with a mop or saran wrap. Which, to explain how that worked, I just painted on saran wrap and slapped it on the canvas. It was really fun. Um, in terms of the paint, though, I used house paint. So I really enjoyed the way it like it flowed. It was perfect for the texture. Some of it even like when I used it for lines, it glistened in the light. But um, and acrylic, of course, they use over top of that. Um, just kind of add, make it a little bit more bold. Um, but for the texture, I just wanted to experiment a little bit, see what was possible. Great. Inspiration from past artists. OK, thank you, Savannah. OK, so and I have another question. And this one's for anyone. It's from Sarah Hensley. And the question is, how does the theme of nostalgia resonate within your art? Um, for me, it, um, it kind of plays on the fact of what do you see? Like, what does this remind you of? 
So for me, it's nostalgic and people are kind of looking in their memories and thinking of, oh, I may have seen that before. So that's how it relates in my work. Okay. And thank you, Savannah. And uh, Kirsty, how does uh, how does nostalgia resonate in your work? For me, it resonates in my work because ever since I was younger, I used to be fond of bees, and my nickname when I was younger was Kirsty Bee. So anytime that I think of bees, I just have a little bit of nostalgia because of it. So it just brings a little bit of happiness and brings back memories like that. All right, thank you, Kirsty. And Paige, this isn't really a fair question, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's fairly obvious how nostalgia is evident in my work. Um, I think the, the obvious answer is, of course, I'm doing artwork that's about my childhood. But I think another aspect of it for me is I'm not only making artwork that is evoking imagery of what happened to me as a child, but I'm also trying to make artwork almost in a way for myself when I was younger. Like, I, I want to make art that, like, 10-year-old Paige would be stoked about. Um, and I just think that's why tapping into, like, a nostalgic part of my artistic side is really important to me, because I, I want to make art that makes me happy and makes different parts of me happy, I guess. That's really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Eric, can you talk about nostalgia in your work? In terms of nostalgia, um, I guess the only aspect behind it is because is that for as long as for as long as I can remember, I I think probably about like in middle school, I pick, picked up an interest in photography. I was main I think at the time I was interested in you know re recording my travels throughout the throughout the states and and the Caribbean and um and at and at school too. So making making art is with taking photographs is is nostalgic for you because it's something you've been doing for so long. That's great. While I've got you here, Hannah Koslowski has another question. She wants to know what kind of advice you might have for uh, for people who are a little bit uh, um, earlier on in their career, freshmen uh, specifically. I'd say just exper experiment. So. Experiment? Yeah. That's great advice. Thank you, Eric. And uh, Paige, advice, advice for freshmen. I think the biggest thing that I can try to push to uh, freshmen is the importance of just coming in outside of class time. Cause I know that's something that took me a really, really, really long time to kind of get in that headspace of like, my my artistic career doesn't just stop when class is over. I need to be working on that as often as possible. And I really wish I took advantage of studio time in my earlier years at Marshall because um, I feel like I just not only would have improved my art so much more, um, but I also just would have so much more art uh, quantity wise, which um, is something that I'm kind of dealing with now is just trying to like push out a bunch of projects, but I just don't have the time. Uh, and I know that's something freshmen kind of struggle with is feeling like, ah, they still want their free time, but I, I think it's just as important to try to make extra studio time for yourself. Yeah. Is there anything you can think of that if somebody told you that back when you were a freshman and wanting free time that you would have listened? Probably not. Um, I think it is just one of those things that it's really hard uh, to want to listen to any advice. I mean, because um, of course another advice is like, don't procrastinate, but no one's going to listen to that until they're in the situation where it's like, oh, I shouldn't have procrastinated. So I think just something every 
every freshman student will realize in their own time. Some might, you know, realize it after the first semester. Some might not realize it until their senior year. But um, it's it's definitely something that I, I I can try to push for people. Thanks, Paige. And Savannah. So for me, I would say uh, get out of your comfort zone and do things that you think that you're bad at. For me, I thought I couldn't understand abstraction. I just could not wrap my head around it, couldn't grasp it until I was told, stop overthinking it. And ever since then, and also look at your like your classmates, what are they doing? It was a big inspiration to use these unconventional materials. Um, one of my classmates that was painting with a toothbrush. I was sitting there <laughs> thinking, that's unheard of, what is this? I mean, I'm sure it was done, but I never considered it for myself. So pushing yourself to try new things and also not worrying about making something that looks amazing all the time. You're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. And for design students, um, I would say take your classes seriously. And you want to make work that's great for your portfolio, but also have fun with it as well. Um, that was something I didn't really grasp until later on. And now I look back and I really want to redo some projects that I've done because I wanted my free time, like what Paige said, I procrastinated. <laughs> so take it seriously. It's very important at this stage. Um, everything you make is important and everything you make you should be proud of. Even if it's the ones that you're not proud of, you still did it. That's great. Thank you, Savannah. And Kirsty, you know what's coming. I would say to keep pushing forward. There are gonna be a lot of times whenever you first begin college that you're going to have tears because you're not gonna think you can do it. Um, so keep pushing forward, you definitely can do it. As well as if you make a mistake or your project fails last minute, you can push through it and you can do another one. The professors will definitely understand. They will help talk to you and they will actually be a friend that you can talk to. It's not like you can be all stressed like the high schoolers, high school teachers tell you, you have to be all professional. You need to like talk to your teachers and let them know what go you're going through and don't be afraid of doing that. Mm, that's really good advice. Um, while you're here, I have another question for you. It's from Matt Smith and it's a two parter, but they're related. So um, your overall display has painting, ceramics, furniture and sculpture. I'm curious if you found one of those mediums to be more useful in conveying your message about CCD and also why did you turn to so many mediums to create your project? That's a good question. Um, so I think my paintings and the one ceramic piece that I created that have the quotes on it actually portray, portray sorry, CCD a little bit more because the way you see it, it's visually there. Um, and whenever you walk away from the paintings, you can't really see the bees. You can't see them at all from far away. But when you walk closer, there's little small details, plants that actually help them, such as clover, flowers, the grass, weeds. So I think those are actually the best ones that portray that. Um, and the reason why I went with so many mediums is because I like doing a bunch. I like doing mixed media um, and I wanted to show what we can be taught at Marshall. So we can be taught many things and we can find many talents that we enjoy. We don't have to just choose one. Um, I also did that to create a little bit of an interior design feel. So once you go in, it feels like you're in a welcome center and a lot of people that think about CCD, they don't really think about it. So it's a little overlooked and you stay inside. Definitely during these times, you don't really go outside. So I want to create a little kind of educational center where you can learn about CCD and about honey bees and beekeeping, all that. That's great. Thank you, Kirsty. 
All right, Paige, I have a couple of questions for you. Okay. Well, the first one is, how did the capstone process change your relationship to Billy Bob? Did it? I'd say, I'd say it kind of did. Um, I mean, I've always known that like Billy Bob was a really good way um, of helping me kind of cope and just something that I really enjoyed making art of. But through, not even inherently capstone, but I guess just through repeating that like phrase to people over and over again, it's kind of made me realize the deeper connection that I have with like, not just the character, but like the the restaurant itself, the memories that I have associated with that and kind of how it is a deeper connection with me and not just a thing that I like. <laughs> and I guess just through um, having to really like write out my my artist talk and everything, I that helped me realize that a little bit more. That's great. And then another question, this one is from Melody. And Melody says, was it hard reliving the traumatic events to make the items for this show? Um, I wouldn't say it was hard. I mean, it's always something that's a little sad for me to think about. Um, but all of, all of, despite them being traumatic events in my life, they've all had happy endings. I mean, my mom did have a brain aneurysm, but she's still alive and with me today. We had a house fire, but you know, not, no one died in it. We still, we have a house now. So even though these were really hard parts of my past, I still, like I said, they all, they all have relatively good endings and um, there's a lot of reasons for me to be happy about them too, so. Absolutely. Thank you, Paige. Okay, looks like I have just one more thing and, and it's, a, it's a comment um, rather than a question, and it's for Kirsty. Um, Kirsty, uh, anonymous thinks it's really cool that you got a welding certificate. I didn't get a welding certificate yet, but I'm going to go to trading school and get it. Um, okay. I, that must I, be what they meant. Yes, <laughs> I do plan on getting it because I know how to weld a little bit already, and I want to push my knowledge a little bit more. Um, I find it interesting to be able to weld on certain things and I find it interesting that I can make a career out of that. So thank you for that comment. Uh, I'm glad you find that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we are at the end of our time and I want to thank everyone for coming and, and thank you students for being here and being so gracious and as, as answering a million questions. Um, it was a really great discussion. So thank you. And, and uh, remember that we have another Capstone show coming up next week. And I hope that you can all be here. <laughs>